Dave Pennington has always been very conscious of his family health history and staying up with physical exams even before he was aware he had a heart rhythm problem. This awareness could help save his life. I don't have a very good family history and that's why I was paying such close attention to this. I, I lost my father at 55 years old with a heart attack and both of his, his next two youngest brothers have died with heart attacks at early ages. One of them had his first heart attack at 40. Um, and both of my grandfathers on both sides died of heart attacks. And they were in their 70s, but nonetheless they died from heart problems. With regard to family history, usually the most common cause of a weak heart uh, in our country is coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease certainly has a hereditary or genetic basis. For goodness sakes, don't wait until something goes wrong to see a doctor. I'm a, I'm a real advocate, especially after, once you've turned 50 years old, I think you should have a physical every year. Whether you feel bad or don't feel bad, you need the physical just to be, to pick up on anything to do with your heart, anything to do with, you know, anything to do with your body. From all of the test results, Dr. Pollock determines that Dave would be a good candidate for the radiofrequency ablation procedure. The uh, ablation technique is a technique uh, that has been around uh, for about 12, 12 to 15 years. It's a procedure where electrical current is placed through a catheter which generates heat and the heat uh, is transferred to an area of the tissue in the heart by raising the temperature it denatures the proteins and the area where the arrhythmia is destroyed. The nice features of radiofrequency ablation is that it is a very well demarcated lesion that's very small, confined to a very small area and usually has no effect on structures within the heart. There are many different types of uh, ablation procedures for a lot of the arrhythmias uh, that especially people without heart disease have, they can be eliminated without the need for a pacemaker or the need for medication. And essentially it prevents their heart from the arrhythmia or from racing, which previously they had the problem with. I'm convinced when it's all packaged together with the lifestyle and the way I eat and the way I, I take care of myself, that this procedure will be the end. I mean, this will be the thing that will make it all worthwhile because this is going to fix the problem that I have, and then I can go on with my life. In a matter of weeks, Dave has gone from the initial diagnosis of his arrhythmia problem, atrial flutter, to what is hoped to be the cure, radiofrequency catheter ablation. A potential benefit if we can cure this rhythm with this procedure after a period of time, he would be able to come off the blood thinning medication, which otherwise he potentially would be on uh, for a lifetime, as well as avoid the need for <clears throat> medication to keep him in regular rhythm. There are many different rhythm disturbances that can be ablated or cured with a catheter. There are also several other disturbances that at this time it's not very feasible to cure with a catheter. There are inherent risks with this procedure, and so we always try to balance that with the risk and benefit of medication, uh, as well as the patient's uh, feelings and understanding uh, of the situation. Dr. Pollock determines the area of the heart responsible for causing Dave's heart rhythm problem. He does this by starting up the abnormal heart rhythm to check what part of the heart it is coming from. What we're doing now is we're pacing the heart uh, to try to get him back into atrial flutter. To accomplish this procedure, we can actually do it during regular sinus rhythm. We do not have to have the patient in the arrhythmia. But if we can get him into flutter easily, uh, we'll try to do the procedure during the arrhythmia. Dr. Pollock carefully guides a catheter with an electrode at the tip to the focal point of the abnormal pathway in the heart muscle. Essentially, this catheter can be manipulated completely without the x-ray camera because we have a graphic representation of exactly where the catheter is in the body. 
and it's actually much more accurate than an x-ray representation. What we're doing is we're moving the catheter to different locations inside the heart so we can get anatomical landmarks to help us uh, for our ablation procedure. Then a mild, painless burst of energy, similar to microwave heat, is transmitted to destroy the small area of heart tissue containing the pathway, ending the electrical misfirings that cause the arrhythmia. Now we're actually applying the radio frequency current. We're going to apply it for a minute or two. We're monitoring the, the, uh, the uh, power and the impedance. Uh, we're coming up on two minutes. The catheter position is stable. We've terminated uh, the rhythm, the uh, atrial flutter, which was the patient's clinical problem. We have completed a complete line, hopefully, of conduction block, which we'll verify in a little bit. The, I don't know if you can see it, but the red dots on the screen, uh, those are all areas where we've applied radio frequency current, and we're trying to form a line to block the electrical impulse. At the end of the procedure, Dr. Pollock tries to induce Dave's heart rhythm problem again. No rhythm problems are seen, so Dave's procedure is concluded to be a success. Okay, it's, it's been an hour since our last ablation. Uh, we typically wait about an hour to make sure that the block that we created in the heart does not come back. <clears throat> Sometimes we can create a line of block that blocks the electrical impulse that recovers after a short period of time. So we waited an hour and now we're just going to repeat making some measurements and pacing to make sure that we have created a permanent line of block. Mr. Pennington, we're, we're all through with the ablation. Uh, it was successful. You're back in regular rhythm and it's our hope that you will not have any further episodes of this and we believe that will be the case. Uh, we'll keep you on the blood thinner for several months and then we'll stop it as long as you remain in regular rhythm and you will not need any other medication. And uh, we're very pleased and you did great. a great job. Great, thanks. The ablation procedure was four and a half hours but it seemed so much longer. The waiting was so hard. I was just so relieved, so relieved. Now it was all over and David was all right. And I had my husband back. Dave was fortunate to partake in this modern medical procedure. Before radiofrequency catheter ablation, patients were treated with medication, underwent open heart surgery, or suffered. It worked. It worked. Hi. 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 Nice Everything went fine. You. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. So we're just going to watch them overnight. This life-saving technology has now advanced to the point where the procedure can be done on an outpatient basis, curing patients within a matter of hours and sending them home the same day or within a few days as with Dave's case. After the ablation procedure was complete, they uh, kept me in the hospital for a few more days to monitor my blood levels and make sure that everything was back to where it was supposed to be. Uh, I went home for the weekend and was back to work the, the following week. Two months after the surgery was complete, I returned to Dr. Pollock's office for an echo, echocardiogram uh, to find out if I had, had in fact, uh, got any of my heart efficiency back. And uh, we were very pleased to find out that my heart was back to 100% capacity and that there were no further complications. And, uh, and we were just uh, very, very pleased that it all turned out as well as it did. There were no problems. looking for that sour note, but no more sour notes. <laughs> the piano's fixed and so am I.